Now he talks about as the carnage after the after the initial beachhead had been taken. He talks about some of the carnage that remains there. In this shoreline museum of carnage, there were abandoned rolls of barbed wire and smashed boulder dozers and big stacks of thrown away life belts and piles of shells still waiting to be moved. In the water floated empty life rafts and soldiers' packs and ration boxes and mysterious oranges. On the beach lay snarled rolls of telephone wire and big rolls of steel matting and stacks of broken, rusting rifles. But there was another and more human litter. It extended in a thin little line, just like a high water mark from miles along the beach. This was the strewn personal gear, gear that would never be needed again by those who fought and died to give us our entrance into Europe. There, in a jumbled row for mile on mile, were soldiers' packs. There were socks and shoe polish, sewing kits, diaries, Bibles, hand grenades. There were the latest letters from home, with the address on each one neatly razored out, one of the security precautions enforced before the boys embarked. There were toothbrushes and razors and snapshots of families back home staring up at you from the sand. There were pocketbooks, metal mirrors, extra trousers, and bloody abandoned shoes. There were broken-handled shovels and portable radios smashed almost beyond recognition and mine detectors twisted and ruined. There were torn pistol belts and canvas water buckets, first aid kits, and jumbled heaps of life belts. I picked up a pocket Bible with a soldier's name in it and put it in my jacket. I carried it half a mile or so and then put it back down on the beach. I don't know why I picked it up or why I put it down again. Soldiers carry strange things with them ashore. In every invasion, there's at least one soldier hitting the beach at H hour with a banjo slung over his shoulder. The most ironic piece of equipment marking our beach, the first, this beach, first of despair, then of victory, was a tennis racket that some soldier had brought along. It lay lonesomely on the sand, clamped in its press, not a string broken. Two of the most dominant items on the beach, refuse, in the beach refuse, were cigarettes and writing paper. Each soldier was issued a carton of cigarettes just before he started. That day, those cartons by the thousand, water-soaked and spilled out, marked the line of our first savage blow. Writing paper and airmail envelopes came second. The boys intended to do a lot of writing in France. Imagine the letters, now forever incapable of being written, that might have filled those blank abandoned pages.